Today is the day. That is Friday, July 9th, 2021. Uh, we got a beautiful day in front of us. I'm gonna make it more beautiful. And actually, let me stop talking to some people actually come in here. But if you're watching this on replay, I'm talking to you. So let's make sure we have our pinned comment here as y'all are checking in. Um, Y'all know the routine. Y'all know how this is. Shout yourself out in the comment section as you are checking in. And we're going to get into the business as quickly as possible. As you are checking in, shout yourself out in the comment section. Happy Friday, everybody. Thursday, July 29th, uh, 2021. This is the only, I mean, not Thursday, Friday. Friday, July, July 9th. Did I say 29th? All right, let me back up. Friday, July 9th, 2021. This is the only one that we will ever have. If you're watching this on replay, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is or what date or what year. This will be only at those days as well. And I'm, that's when I'm recording this. So as you are checking in, again, shout yourselves out in the comments section. We're going to get started in about 30, let's say about 33 seconds. We're going to get started. I'm going to give people a moment to shout themselves out. I'll tell you all that this is my newest book called The Third Day. It's coming out on the third day of August the 3rd of 2021. So that's about three weeks from now. That's when this book becomes the widely available. That's when we're shipping out all the copies for any of you who have already pre-ordered this book on August the 1st. I'm doing a live presentation only for people who pre-ordered the book. And we'll get into all of that in a minute. So again, as y'all coming in, shout yourselves out. We got Beverly Hills in the house, 90210. Shout out to Beverly Hills. And I'm going to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, even if you do, let me remind you because I know you got a lot going on. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, former nine year professional athlete. I'm an author of 29 books, including this one right here called The Third Day. And when you go get your copy of The Third Day, you can also get this one right here, which is called The Work on Your Game System Manual. We just got our initial shipment of these books in yesterday. So this is the system manual. If you check the little box when you get this book, you can also get this book. That's what this book is right here. And these are coming out again, August the 3rd. But aside from that, I have built this, this whole brand, this business, this philosophy called Work On Your Game. It's all about taking the tools to get you to the top 1% in the sports world and using those same tools in the business world and in everyday life. I do that through things like these live streams, through books, through podcasting. I put out a podcast every day, also called Work On Your Game. Through speaking gigs, coaching, training, courses, the articles, et cetera, et cetera. So all that said, what we're talking today, I already told you the topic. I said this in my story, if you didn't see it. I know I just did it over the last like five, 10 minutes. But the topic here today are the traits of level 10 individuals. So the things I'm going to share here today, and I'm saying level 10 being the highest possible level, by the way, things I'm going to share with you here today, you're going to do two things with these. Number one, you're going to utilize these traits to analyze the type of people that you come across in life and ask yourself, okay, is this person that I'm dealing with, this person that I'm talking to, is this a level 10 type of individual? Is this the type of, type of person that I want to be around? Is this the type of person who associating with them is actually going to make my life better and advance me in life? Because level 10 people will make you better. They will move you forward. Whereas if you're with people who are not quite level 10 or they are the opposite of any of these traits, it's going to move you backward. All right? Everybody's familiar with the law of association. You become the average of the people you spend the most time with. It doesn't matter how many there are. I just did an episode of that on my show just two days ago. And the other thing is you want to check yourself for every trait that I share here today, not based on what anybody else is doing. You're going to check yourself on these traits based on what you're doing. You need to make sure because how many do I have here? I got eight traits. I'm going to give you eight traits of level 10 individuals. You want to check yourself for all eight of these and make sure that you check the box on all of them. Because if you're not checking the box on any of these traits, then what's going to happen is somebody's going to look at you and say, well, hey, maybe I shouldn't be hanging around this guy. Maybe I shouldn't be hanging around her because they're not a level 10 person. So while you're looking around everybody else, making sure they measure up, you better look in the mirror and make sure that you measure up. So I'm going to go through all eight of these traits. I will tell you what they are. I will explain why. Then I will recap them, of course. And if you ever, if you have any questions, comments on anything that I say while I'm talking, post it in the comment section. I will address all comments at the end of this live. So let's get straight into these, the traits of level 10 individuals. These are the kind of people that you want around you as your teammates, your coworkers, your bosses, your employees. These are the people that you want to do business with. These are the people you want as your friends. These are people you want to get in relationships with. So check yourself and check the people around you and make sure you and they 
check the boxes. Number one, a level 10 person type of person who will tell you what they actually think and what they really feel without beating around the bush on the subject. A level 10 person is, they can be your friend. They can be a very nice person. They can be a compassionate person. They can be a, they can be a tactical person, tactful person rather. But at the same time, they're not gonna BS you. They're not gonna bullshit you. They're not gonna blow smoke up your ass and tell you something just to make you feel good. A level 10 person will tell you something that you need to hear, not necessarily what you wanna hear when they feel like you need to hear it. They will let you know about yourself when you need to hear about yourself. Too many of us these days either, A, as the recipient, we can't hear criticism or we say everybody who criticizes is a hater or there's some type of negative person who should be completely ignored, which makes no sense. It's only gonna make, make you worse in life when you think like that. Or we can't tell another person any type of criticism because maybe you're thinking they're gonna do the same thing, call you a hater, or you don't wanna sound like a quote unquote hater or like a negative person, so you don't tell people what they really need to know. Or even if you do try to tell people what they need to know, and I know some people like I know some people like that first type. And the other type is a type of person who will tell somebody what they need to know, but you soften it so much that people don't even get the message. Like you dance around the topic so much that they don't actually hear what you're saying, so you don't you don't really get your point across. And a level 10 person doesn't have these problems. A level 10 person will tell you exactly what you need to know and they'll tell you to your face. Now ask yourself, again, everything I'm saying here today. Ask yourself, are you doing this? And ask yourself, can you take that? When somebody tells you what you need to know about yourself, do you listen? Do you absorb it? Can you say, you know what? That was kind of a, a smack in the face what you said, but actually you're right. And I'm glad you said it because I needed to hear it. I needed somebody to tell me that to my face. Are you willing to take that and are you willing to give it out? Point number two, I'm talking to traits of level 10 people. Number two, level, two pe level 10 people rather, expect you to be on their level. And if you're not, they expect you to be doing the work to step it up to get on their level. They do not tolerate losers around them. Level 10 people do not tolerate people who are not at their level or at least not trying to get there. Because again, remember the law of association, you become the average of the people you spend the most time with. So if a level 10 person is looking at you and you're not at the level 10, you're at like the six, uh, how long do you think they're gonna let you stick around before they start trying to figure out ways to distance themselves from you? Because you're bringing their average down. So level 10 people are looking for people who will keep their average up and make them better. So you, the question you need to ask yourself is, first of all, are you at this level? And I'll go through all these points so you'll know if you are. And then look at the people that you hang around. Look at the people you spend time with. Open up your, when you get off this live, open up your call log on your phone and look at the last 10 people you've been on the phone with. Look at your text messages. Look at the people you're texting. Look at your, your DMs. Look at the people you're talking to in the DMs. Are you talking to and associating with people who are going somewhere and doing something? Or are you talking to a bunch of losers who ain't got nothing going on? And this is a question, again, this is one that you should be asking yourself every single day. Are you associating with a bunch of losers or are you associating with people who are about something? I was watching this uh, presentation by this guy named Bob Proctor. And some of you who's older might know him. He's still alive, but Bob was in this movie called The Secret, and he was in his book called The Secret that some of you may be familiar with. And he does, he does his own presentations and events back in the days. I mean, he's older now. He still does it, but he's older now. And there was one presentation he was talking about before his transformation as a human. He said he was in a bar, and he was sitting at the bar, and he was drinking and you know, smoking and doing all the stuff people do in a bar, just hanging out. And one minute, and he had this realization one day, because he would come to this bar all the time. And one day he had this realization, he looked around, he said, damn, it ain't nothing but a bunch of bums in here. And then he looked at, and then he thought about himself. He was like, well, I'm calling these people bums. I'm in here hanging with them. I need to get the hell out of here unless I want to keep being a bum. And he said he left that bar and he's never been back since. And it was decades ago that he was in that bar. And I'm telling you that story just to illustrate the point. Who are you hanging around? Who are your associations? Do you have losers around you? If so, then you're about to become a loser too. Uh, you can't hang around losers and not become a loser. All right, so check yourself on everything I'm saying here. Number three, today we are talking the traits of level 10 people. If you're just coming in, you can leave any comment or question. I'll address all of them at the end. Number three, trait of a level 10 person. This person is consistent in their ideas and actions and aims. They are consistent, meaning they are, you know what to expect from a level 10 person. Y'all watching the NBA Finals? You know what I said about the NBA Finals? If you saw my preview video on YouTube, and it's going exactly as I predicted, at least through two games, is the only way the Bucs can win is if their top three players, Giannis, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton, all show up every game. Doesn't mean they got to be amazing every game, but they got to show up. 
And what happened in the first two games is the number two and three guys, we don't know if they're going to show up or not. Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton don't show up every game. So it's amazing that they even made it to the finals. But if they're not going to show up every game, they're not going to win. Especially when you're going against a team like Phoenix, where they're top three guys. Chris Paul, Booker, DeAndre Ayton. They all show up every game. The whole playoffs, the Suns' top three players showed up every game. And that's why they're in the finals. And that's why they're halfway to finishing the series and winning the championship. Because of the consistency. Level 10 people show up every single day. Any of you who follow sports. And I, I talked about this before. I talk about it all the time. And I talk about it a lot in this book, Third Day. Is that what makes somebody the best in professional sports. Many casual fans incorrectly believe what makes a great athlete is the fact that when there's a big game, they just show up and they have a whole bunch of points. Maybe they do, but that's not what makes them great. Or this person just has a lot of talent. Oh, this person can do this. They can do a crossover and they can jump and they can score and they can average 30 and they block shots and they the, all the talents and attributes that they have. That may be part of the equation, but that's not what makes somebody great. What makes people great in professional sports, you think of somebody like Ronaldo or Messi in soccer. And I don't even watch soccer. Somebody like Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant, Kobe Bryant in basketball. Somebody like Tom Brady, Jerry Rice in football, Deion Sanders in football. What makes them great is that they had a good or great game every single game. Not every now and then, not only in the big games, they had a great game every game. And that's what made them great, is the consistency of being that good is what people pay for. The reason why you could get a ticket to go see Kobe or who's the person now, somebody like Giannis or Kevin Durant, and you can anticipate they're gonna have a good game, they usually do. And that's the reason that people pay for tickets. That's the reason why LeBron James, the reason what, what makes him great is not his attributes, even though those are great. And it's not that he's had great games and big games, even though he has many times, is the fact that LeBron has a pretty good or great game every single night. That's what makes him great. And that's why he gets paid the big bucks. And that's why he's the starter he is, that you can, you can predict he's going to be great. And then he goes and does it. Now, the players that are a level below him, those are the guys who you don't know if they're going to have a good game or not. If they do, you're like, great. That person had a great game. Good for the, good for the home team. But there are many nights they don't show up. There are some nights you watch them play, you forget they were even on the court because they didn't show up. And it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in any other industry. If you want to be great, you have to do it every day. Not just when you feel like it, not just when you're excited, not just when everybody's watching, even when nobody's watching, you got to show up consistently. Level 10 people are consistent. All right, have I explained that enough? So you need to check yourself. Are you consistent in your work? Look at your best days and ask yourself, how often do you have those best days? Is it once a month? Is it once a week? Is it every day? How often are you showing up and giving your best effort? Again, in my newest book, The Third Day, I'm going to explain to you exactly what that means and how exactly to do it. So level 10 people, it doesn't mean being consistent doesn't mean that they won't try new things or that they're not willing to you know, step outside of their routines every now and then. But it does mean that they have goals. They have clear goals and they're not changing their goals every other week. Uh, they don't change their goals every time they see somebody's Instagram post went viral and now they're going to try to do that. Now this person doing this, now they're going to do that. Now TikTok is hot, now they're going to do that. Level 10 people don't keep changing their goals based on what they see everybody else doing. They can appreciate whatever other people do, but that doesn't mean they go and try to do it. Level 10 people stick to their script and they follow through on that script. Point number four, we are talking the traits of level 10 people. Number four, a level 10 person will disagree with you state clearly why they disagree with you and they will stand firm on their disagreement of you or of your point not even disagreeing with you as a person but disagreeing with your point or your stance or your information whatever you're saying this is a really important point especially nowadays because all of you are obviously you use the internet you see how the climate is right now when it comes to media when it comes to social media traditional media news media politics now it's health with the pandemic and all this stuff. Now, many of you, maybe, and probably a bunch of people that you know definitely are afraid of what? Expressing the quote unquote wrong opinion publicly. Why? Because if you express the, express the wrong opinion publicly, wrong, I'm using air quotes because there's no such thing as a wrong opinion. But if you express the wrong opinion around the wrong people, what are they gonna do? They're gonna attack you, they're gonna vilify you, they're gonna try to cancel you, they're gonna get mad at you, they're gonna tell you that you're wrong for having an opinion that's different from theirs. There was this video, I just seen this on Twitter today, right before I started this live stream. This dude was at the Yankees game last night, white guy, and he had on a, a Trump hat. He had on the Make America Great Again hat. And there were some fans sitting behind him 
it was a man and a woman. I couldn't really see the man's face, but the woman looked like maybe she was Latin. And I guess she was mad at him for wearing a Trump hat. She tried to take his hat off his head in the middle of, the, of Yankee Stadium. I don't know what the hell her plan was in doing that. But anyway, they got thrown out of the stadium. This woman and the man, they got kicked out the stadium for doing that. And then the guy, he had took his hat off so they couldn't take it. And then everybody was like, put your hat back on. He put the hat back on. And I posted, I said, I respect that. Regardless of how you feel about Trump or make America great again, the point is, you got to have the willingness to stand on whatever you support, whatever you believe, whatever you agree with. And if you don't have the balls to stand on it, then why would anybody respect you? And if you have an opinion and as soon as you express that opinion, people start attacking you for that opinion. And then you stop having the opinion because people attack you. I don't care if it's your friends, your family members, some commentators on social media. If you allow yourself to be bullied out of your own opinion, then you're not a level 10 person. Level 10 people have their opinion. They have their stance and they're willing to back it up. They're willing to tell you why they feel what they feel. They will stand on it and you're not going to bully them out of their position. And someone who is allowed, allows themselves to be bullied out of their position or out of their opinion or out of how they feel just because they don't want the mob to attack them or your family members to attack you or you don't want you know, some Twitter commentators to attack you, then you're not a level 10 person. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean I have anything personally against you, but you're not a level 10 person. Level 10 people say, this is how I feel. They will defend it. They will answer your questions. They will stand on where they stand and they'll be firm about it. Now ask yourself, how many people do you know who fit that description? How many people do you know when they come across someone who disagrees with them, they just they just can't even handle they can't even have a conversation with someone who disagrees with them. How many people, you know, who are Democrats, but if they meet somebody who's a Republican. They can't even talk to them. They got to leave the room. How many people do you know who are? I don't know. What's another one? They, they want everybody to get vaccinated for for COVID, but they meet somebody who doesn't want to get the vaccine and they get mad and they start arguing with them, yelling at them because they won't get a vaccine. How many people do you know who do this? How many people you know wear a mask everywhere they go? They see somebody without a mask on and looking at that person like they're like they're an angry monster that's going to eat the city. How many people do you know who fit that description? How many of you fit that description? And how many of you are willing to have a conversation with someone who has a completely different opinion from you, the opposite opinion of you, but you can still have a conversation with them and be civil with them and shake their hand and be respectful. Level 10 people can do these things. Now, everybody else, I don't know what we're going to call them, but they're not level 10. Again, doesn't mean they're bad people. Doesn't mean they shouldn't be allowed to you know, be allowed to pr pursue wealth, health and prosperity and the American dream and, or whatever dream, whatever country they're from. But they ain't level 10. You want to be level 10. You must fit the description of everything that I'm saying right here. Level 10 people will disagree and stand on their disagreement or wherever they stand. Point number five. We are talking to trace of level 10 people. If people came in the middle. If you got a question, comment, go ahead, post it in the comments. I'll get to it at the end. Number five, level 10 people sees quality and potential in other people and they work to help bring that quality and potential out of other people. In other words, level 10 people, because they know what it feels like and how to get to the level 10, they look for the traits in other people that could help them get to level 10 and they try to give them the game. Like right now, I'm giving you the game of what a level 10 person does in the way a level 10 person thinks. Level 10 people look at other people and see, okay, what about this person could help raise their level up? What about this person? They have level six right now. To get to a level 10, what do we need to do to close that gap? What would this person need to change? How would they need to look at things differently? What kind of information does this person need to get? And a level 10 person will at least try to plant the seeds with you. Now, they don't have to give their whole life to you, and they're probably not going to spend too much time around you because you're going to bring their average down. But a level 10 person will at least tell you what you need to do. A level 10 person will let you know, like, look, you need to take this step, this step, and this step. Now, either you're going to do it or you're not, but the level 10 person will let you know. They will give you the game. So if you're a level 10 person and you see somebody who needs to step their game up, you give them the game. Right? You don't hide the game from them. You don't not tell them what they need to know. You tell them what they need to know. You give them the game. Now, again, whether they do it or not is not in your hands. It's out of your hands once you give them the game. If they don't want to do it, again, they might be a two-minute person or a two-hour person. They want to become that two-day person like we talked about a couple of days ago. They have to do the work. But you tell them what the work is. Again, my whole brand is called Work On Your Game. Every day... I'm giving people the game because I know what it takes to raise your level up and get to the level that you want to get to mentally. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. You don't have to do lives on Instagram. Whatever way you want to do it, there are certain principles that apply to everyone. So level 10 people understand the principles and they're always giving the game. Think about the people that you follow online who are you know, motivational or inspirational to you. 
or the people whose books you read or the people whose podcasts you subscribe to or the people who post something and you save it to your phone. Who are those people? They're the people that are always giving the game out, right? They're telling you, like, this is the thing you need to know. Here's what you need to understand. Let me tell you a story from my life and how I use this setback to make it a comeback and step my game up to the next level. They, you notice that it's all the same things. They're just saying it in different ways. So level 10 people are always giving the game out. So how many people around you are always giving out game versus are they just looking around and seeing everything, but they're not doing anything about it? Level 10 people are always giving game. Point number six. We are talking the traits of level 10 people. If you have a question or comment, again, post it in the comments. I will address it at the end. Number six, we got eight traits here. Number six, a level 10 person makes every situation better when they're in the room than if they're not in the room. In other words, a level 10 person, you bring them in, they will find a way to improve on whatever is going on. And when they leave, things will be worse because they're not there anymore. And it doesn't matter what the situation is. A level 10 person, this is what I mean by this is a level 10 person always finds a way to make themselves useful and finds a way to add value to every situation. They always add value to a situation. Even if they're not an expert on the topic, even if they don't know a whole lot about what is going on in that room, a level 10 person always finds a way to make themselves useful and valuable and to add value to other people. Always. It doesn't matter where you put them. They will find a way to add value. All right. Just tonight, as a matter of fact, a friend of mine is in a mastermind group of mine and she sent me a message and she said, Dre, there's this art event going on in Miami tonight. Would you come to the event and you, know, you bring your girl and I'm bringing my friend. I told her about you. You should come and all this. I don't know anything about art. I do not draw art. I do not create art. I can't paint. I don't know anything about art, but if I was working, let's just say somebody brought me to an art studio and said, Dre, just help these people out. And I'm like, help them with what? And they said, I don't know, just help them out. I'm gonna figure out a way to help out. I'm gonna figure out a way to add value based on what I know I can do and what I see as an opportunity there because level 10 people always add value, okay? Think about this. Do you know any person in your life who you bring them into a situation, just by their presence, they make the situation worse? Maybe because they have bad energy, maybe because they're negative, maybe because they're confrontational with everybody, maybe because they just don't want to help other people out, maybe because they're only thinking about what's in it for them. You know any people like that? They ain't level 10 people. They're like level five and below. Those are kind of those are two minutes people. Don't spend any time around them. Don't bring them anywhere, especially not around anybody that you know you're hinging your reputation on. Don't do that. Don't recommend them for a job. Nothing. You can give them the game, but they got to step their game up before you start associating with them too much because they'll bring your level down. Level 10 people always find a way to add. So you could take a player like, look at somebody like Chris Paul, who's playing in the NBA Finals right now with the Phoenix Suns. He got, he was playing for the Clippers for many years, got traded to the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets had their best chance at making the finals when Chris Paul was on that team. Even though people were like, well, how is Chris Paul, who has the ball all the time, going to play with James Harden, who has the ball all the time? How is that going to work? But they had their best seasons when they played together. Why is that? That's because Chris Paul is the type of guy any situation you put him in, he's going to find a way to make that team better. That's a level 10 type of individual. Then they trade him to the Oklahoma City Thunder. And the Thunder is supposed to be tanking. It's supposed to be just trying to lose on purpose so they can get draft picks and rebuild, right? And what happened? The Thunder went to the damn playoffs and made it all the way to a game seven with Chris Paul on the team. Why? Because when you put a person like that on a team, they're not going to be a terrible team. They might not be great. They might not win a championship, but they're not going to be terrible because a level 10 person will not allow any group they're a part of to be that bad. They're going to raise the level. Then Chris Paul gets traded to the Phoenix Suns. People are like, all right, well, Chris Paul, I mean, he's pretty good. He, maybe he can help Phoenix out. Phoenix ain't been to the playoffs in 10 years. So what do we think they're going to do? They'll be okay. Maybe they'll make the playoffs finally, but they ain't doing anything else. Now look at them. They up 2-0 in the NBA Finals. Do you think that's because of DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker? Not really. I mean, those guys are good. Don't, I'm not taking anything away from those guys, but the reason they're in the finals is Chris Paul. Everybody knows that because Chris Paul is a level 10 player. He's the type of person who any team you put him on, he may not even be the most talented player on the team, but he finds a way to add value and raise the level of everybody that is in that group. So what you need to do on this point is look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself of all the groups that I'm a part of, does my presence make that group better? Or am I making the group worse? And when I leave that group, when I'm not there, is the group better without me or is it worse without me? And I want you to understand something. There is no neutral on this. There is no, it's the same. Ain't no the same. In life, there is no neutral. You are either getting better or you're getting worse. You're either making a situation better by your presence or you're making it worse by your presence. There is no middle ground. 
So you're either doing one or the other. If you're a level 10 person, every group you're a part of, you make that group better by your mere presence and you find a way to add value, even if you don't know a lot about what's going on in that room. Point number seven, we are talking the traits of level 10 people. Number seven of eight, level 10 people are initiators. They take personal initiative, which means they start things. They don't wait for somebody to tell them what to do. They don't wait for someone to give them permission. They don't wait for you know, themselves to be forced into action. They choose to take action. Level 10 people take personal initiative. That is the fourth principle of the work on your game philosophies. Discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. What does personal initiative mean? If you listen to my show, you know what it means. It means the go-getter energy to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. That is what a level 10 person does. They do not sit around and wait for somebody to tell them what to do. They go and do it. They don't need permission to do what's right. All they need is courage, and they have the courage to go take action. Understand that this word initiative the root word of initiative is initial. What does initial mean? You know, when you sign a contract and they say, put your initials right here, what does that mean? It means the first letter of your name. Initial means first. Personal initiative means you move first. You go first. You don't wait for somebody else to tell you what to do. You just go do it because you see that opportunity. And even if you end up being wrong, you fix it. But leaders go first. No one makes somebody a leader in life, not that they're the smartest or the most talented or they had the most money or the best stats. What makes somebody a leader is that they initiate. They go first. They're the one who moves first and everybody else follows them. Just like I talked about Chris Paul. Is he the most talented player on his team? Maybe not, but he's the leader on that team because he moves first and everyone else follows his lead. And when he's gone, those players will be better because they were around him. Y'all saw the Michael Jordan documentary last summer, last spring. And all the players that played with Michael Jordan said, look, I wasn't really friends with Michael Jordan. He was kind of a jerk. He would push us. He was kind of an asshole. He was very competitive. It was all about winning to him. But when I was playing with Michael Jordan, I was playing at a level that I couldn't have got to without Michael Jordan. And after Michael Jordan, everybody who played with him got paid. Everybody. Why is that? Because he raised the level of the whole team by his very presence. That's what a level 10 person does. Anyone there around will be better by being around that type of person. So again, everything I'm saying here, you need to check yourself. Are you doing this? Are you a reflection of these points? And number eight, last one, we're talking the characteristics and traits of level 10 people. Level 10 people take care of themselves in body, in mind, and in spirit. Level 10 people do take care of themselves. They, as a matter of fact, they prioritize themselves, meaning they put themselves first. And because they put themselves first, then they can help other people out. So understand that being a level 10 person is not just you're the type of person who you ever hear people say, this person, they're just all about everybody else. They're all about giving. They'll, they'll just do anything for other people. Maybe it's true, but the reason that someone's capable of doing things for other people is because they do things for themselves first. Understand that in life, you are your number one priority. If you're, unless you're a parent and you have a young child who can't take care of themselves, maybe your kid can nudge ahead of you for the first 18 years. After that, you go back to being your number one priority because a level 10 person can't help you unless they've helped themselves first. And whenever you're on an airplane, you see the, the flight attendants in the, standing in the middle before the plane takes off and they had a mask and they're doing a demonstration and all that. Not the COVID mask, I'm talking about the oxygen mask. And what do they say? If the oxygen mask drop, Put the mask on yourself first, then help your children and help other people if you want to help them out. And the metaphor of that demonstration is what? You can't help anybody else until you help yourself. Level 10 people understand this. They prioritize making sure that their stuff is in order and then they go help everybody else get their things in order. So level 10 people take care of them. So they take care of their bodies. They take care of their minds and they take care of their spirits. And because they do it, they set the example with themselves, then they could go give game to anybody else. Like, how can I give you game about fitness if I don't take care, if I don't go to the gym? How can I give you game about mindset if I don't have my own mind in the right place? How can I give you game and you know, tell you something to bring your spirits up when you're feeling down if I don't do it to myself when I'm feeling down? So I have to be the example of everything that I want to give out. So level 10 people, do they understand this inherently. They don't even need to say it. They don't even need to say it you know, in so many words, but they know it that they got to take care of them, then they can give you game. So anybody you know who's an expert on any subject, usually 
that person is usually pretty good at that thing for themselves. If somebody's going to be an expert talking about money, usually they're pretty good with their own money. If someone's an expert on fitness, usually they're in good shape. All right, don't hire a trainer who's fat. All right, don't hire a, a barber who ain't got no hair. All right, you probably want to deal with people who are already doing the thing that are good at that thing. Don't hire somebody who's going to help you with mindset. Doesn't seem to even have their own mind in the right space. Doesn't make sense. They probably wouldn't even get into the job. So level 10 people, take care of themselves. It is not just about everybody else. Level 10 people know that they are number one and then everybody else is after that. All right, so don't get that misconstrued to being level 10 is all about everybody else. It's about you, then it's about everybody else. So all that said, if you have a question, comment, anything that I said, post it in the comments section right now. I'm gonna recap all eight points. I went over eight points, characteristics of level 10 people. I'm gonna go through them real quick, then I'm gonna answer all questions. I'm gonna tell you about this event that I'm doing in Miami in three, not three weeks, seven weeks, seven weeks, and this book that I have coming out in three weeks. So traits of level 10 people. Number one, they tell you what they really think without beating around the bush. They tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Number two, they expect you to be on their level and they expect you to step your game up when you are around them or they will kick you from being around them. Number three, they are consistent in their actions and aims. Doesn't mean they won't try new things, but they keep their focus directed to their stated outcomes. Number four, a level 10 person will disagree with you, clearly state why they disagree, and they will stand firm on where they stand. They do not get bullied by the mob into changing their opinion because they're afraid of having a different opinion. Number five, level 10 people seek quality and potential in other people and work to bring that potential out of other people. Number six, level 10 people make every situation that they're involved in better. It doesn't matter what it is. They don't have to know anything about it. They will find a way to add value because this is what level 10 people do. They always add value to a situation. Number seven, level 10 people are initiators who start things and do not wait for permission or for someone to ask them to do things. They go do things on their own initiative. They don't wait for somebody else to tell them what to do. And number eight, level 10 people take care of themselves. They can't help anybody else unless they help themselves. You help you first, then you can help everybody else. All that said, if you like what you just heard, let me explain something to you all. I'm doing a live event here in Miami, beautiful South Florida, on August the 25th. It is called Work On Your Game Live. You see the pinned comment right there, workonyourgame.live. That's where you can get all the details. You can get tickets to that event. It's a full day, one day, full day event here in Miami. Miami is a beautiful place. Let me show you how beautiful it is in Miami. You see how beautiful that sky is? Beautiful, clear skies. It's like this every day, all year round. August 25th is gonna be just like this. I am teaching the entire day. I'm doing the whole thing. So if you like what you just heard for the last 30 minutes, imagine if I give you eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours of all my best personal development material. And here's the promise. You will leave that event with a full out plan for your personal and professional development and progress moving forward. No matter where you came from, when you leave, you will have a whole plan. You're gonna have a whole book full of, a whole book full of notes and ideas and things that you're going to update, address, do different, change, and uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? It's gonna be a whole day of game, let's just say that. The whole work on your game philosophy we're gonna be giving there, we're gonna talk confidence, we're gonna talk communication, we're gonna talk dealing with the third days. When you have those long days and tough days in life, how do you deal with those situations? All of that's gonna be covered. You're gonna be in a room full of like-minded people who are just as serious as you are about their growth and development. You will be able to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. I will answer all questions. Any question you have will be answered before you leave that event. Every question is gonna be answered. Yes, we're gonna have food and drinks. We're gonna keep you there all day. We're gonna give you food, we're gonna give you something to drink so you're not gonna starve. All right, we're gonna have air conditioning and all that. So that is, again, workonyourgame.live is the link right there. It is in Miami. Next Thursday is the deadline to get tickets. Next Thursday is the deadline to get tickets. So you can't get a ticket on, you can't walk up August 25th and buy a ticket at the door. We are not selling tickets at the door. Next Thursday is the last day to get tickets because we have to, we got to put together the logistics of all this with the venue, with the food, and we got to know how much we're going to need. We need to know how many people are coming. So again, Next Thursday is the last day to get tickets. The link is right there, workonyourgame.live. If you're on my email list, I'm sending another email out today. I might have already sent it out, but every day I've been sending emails letting people know about this and giving you more game. Every email I send, I give you game. All right? I don't just tell you, go do something. I give you game, then I tell you to go do something. So all that being said, and my newest book called The Third Day, this is coming out August 3rd. You can get this by going to thirddaybook.com. You'll see this in my story. I talk about this every day, all day. And the link to Work On Your Game Live is in my bio and also just right there, workonyourgame.live. Notice that's not .com, that's .live. We own workonyourgame.com too. 
But so if you get it by accident, then just change it to workingyourgame.live. So now I'm reading questions and comments. Jay Morelos said, looking forward for your book. Me too. We got a stack of, I got a stack of books sitting right here to my left. So August 3rd, everything will be going out. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do we have a question? Somebody says something here. I know I saw it. JN said, same way a team can have a bad leader or a cancerous leader. Is there such thing as a bad level 10 person or a cancerous level 10 person? No, because to be a level 10 person, you're not going to be cancerous. Cancerous means you, your presence is kind of lowering the level of everybody else in the room. It's impossible to be level 10 if you're doing that. Level 10 people find a way to raise everybody's level. Now, they might do it in a way that people may not initially like, but in the long run, they will understand. And the same thing with Chris Paul, same thing with Michael Jordan, same thing with Steve Jobs. Some people initially didn't like the way that they did their thing, but in the long run, they appreciated it when they really got to see the big picture of what that person was bringing to the table. So no, you cannot be a cancerous level 10 person. It's impossible. Sir Isaac, what's going on, my man? From Summer is Serious, I remember. Savage said, dress code to get in the event. It'll be business casual, Savage Fitness. I mean, you want to wear something comfortable. But you're going to be, I mean, we're going to be in there all day, so you don't have to put a suit on or nothing. I ain't wearing no suit. No, I'm not wearing a suit. Business casual is the dress code. Wam Well said, what is your biggest regret? Hmm. My biggest regret? I don't have any one big crazy regret. One of the things that I talk about when it comes to regrets, though, I will tell you, and this is something that we'll probably talk about at Work On Your Game Live, is that any regrets you do have, you want them to be regrets of commission, not regrets of omission. Regret of omission is meaning you didn't do something and you wish you did. Regrets of commission means you did something and you're like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have did that. I got plenty of things I did, and I'm like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have did that. But I can laugh at it because I did it, so I know what happened. Regrets of omission are bad regrets because then you'll never know what happened because you didn't do anything. Cam Greeley said, I started listening to you last spring. You changed my mindset and perspective for the better. I appreciate you, Dre. Peace and love. I appreciate you, Cam. Cam, you should come to work on your game live. If you can't do that, at least make sure you have claims your copy of this book the third day. The book is free, by the way. I didn't tell you all that. I'm giving you all this book free. All you want to do is cover the shipping. So if you just cover the shipping for the book, I will ship the book to anywhere that you live. We got worldwide shipping, of course, in the United States, all of that. So again, thirddaybook.com. So Cam, come to work on your game live. If you can't do that, get the third day. But everybody should come to work on your game live. I mean, why not come to Miami in August? It's going to be beautiful. I'm teaching a whole day. There's nothing you could possibly lose coming to work on your game live. So everybody should be at this event. So next Thursday, we're going to know who everybody is. Because next Thursday is the last day to get tickets. For those, again, I'll keep saying that. Next Thursday is the last day to get tickets to this event right here, workonyourgame.live. And let me give you all the link to Third Day. That's the link to my book, thirddaybook.com. That's thirddaybook.com. Uh, question, what am I looking forward to most about the event? Having the people in the room, giving the game in the room. I, I mean, like I have said in these lives that I've been doing this week, and I've been doing live streams for a long time, but... If you like what I do on Instagram and you like the posts I put up on IG or the stories or YouTube videos or the podcast or this live stream, imagine what I'm like in person. When you're sitting in the room in person with me and you can shake my hand, look me in my eyes, ask me any question. And the only people in the room are people who are just as serious as you are about taking their game where they wanted to go. All right, it's a hundred times different than just watching somebody through a phone. And I talked about this in the post that I put up yesterday on IG. It's a big difference, everybody. For those of you who never go to events or things like that, like I do speaking gigs, I've done TED Talks, I'm hosting my own event now, I go to events all the time. So, and I mean, go to events like to speak, and I go to events and sit in the crowd and listen. So I do both. For those of you who don't go to events like that, or you never have really been into it, or you don't really get it, you don't really understand, read the post that I put up yesterday on Instagram. The picture where you see me standing there and a woman's talking to me, and there's people standing around behind her. Read that post that I put up so you can understand that being in the room is way different than watching something online. Being in the room means you can actually meet people. Being in the room means it's a whole different world when somebody's talking to you in person than when they're talking to you through a phone. Like I'm reading your comments and I can say your name and shout you out and all that. But it's way different than when I'm actually looking you in your face and talking to you. It's way different. You're going to hear things completely differently. Even if I said the exact same thing, 
in person, you will hear it differently than when I say it through a phone or you're watching me on YouTube. It's a whole different world. That's why you need to go places and actually be in the room. Like I just told y'all tonight, a friend of mine, she's in the same mastermind group as me. She invited me to come to some events. She said it's some type of art type of event. I don't really care about art like that. I'm not really into it. The reason I'm going to the event is because I know her and I know that she knows people who are level 10 people. That's the reason I'm going to the event. Not because I want to see the art, not because I'm going to buy a painting. It's because I know there are going to be level 10 people in that room. And it's way different meeting somebody who's level 10 and shaking their hand than you know, Instagramming somebody who's level 10 and sending them a DM. It's a whole different world. That's why you got to be in the room. Everybody understand? So at Work On Your Game Live, you will be in the room with me and a bunch of other people who understand this concept of being in the room. I guarantee you, your level will go up just by being in the room. Even if you don't remember anything that I say that whole day, your level will go up just by being in the room, 100%. So let me see what we got. JN said, I tried to download your book, buy a game. The link wasn't working. Do you have any actual copies of it? You mean like a physical copy? JN, if you want to get a physical copy of Buy Your Game, yes, go to workonyourgame.com. Work on, yeah, workonyourgame.com. Just click on the link for books and you can buy a physical copy if you want. Now, if you want the download, that's at workonmygame.com slash buy a game. You said the link wasn't working? Let me check that out. But if you said the link wasn't working, then we'll fix the link and make sure the link is working. But the link should be working for buy a game. That, get, that book we've been giving out for free for a decade. Believe it or not, it's been a long time we've been giving that book out for free. So I'll check on that. Send me a, a DM or a text and we'll make sure that, that link is working. But that link should be working fine. Yeah, I'm going to the page right now just to make sure that it's there. So work on your game dot live again is where you can get the J Sebastian. J Sebastian Alpha 8 was good. Are you coming to work on your game live, J Sebastian? That's what I want to know. Work on your game dot live is the link. So JN, I'm going to the link to get by a game. I'm saying that this works. Yeah, it's working right now. I just went to it. It works. So go to work on my game dot com slash buy a game. That's the link. I'm going to post it right here. So anybody who wants to read my first book called Buy a Game, this book came out over 10 years ago. This is just me telling my story from when I was playing ball. You can get that book for free right here. This is a PDF. This is a download PDF so you can read it right now. That's my first book, Buy a Game, right there. That's where you can get that book. Wham said, how do you navigate, find a balance between enjoying youth and destroying your future? Well, I don't know if you want to destroy your future. I don't know if you want to find a balance with that. You don't want to destroy your future. Why I'm well, do you listen to the Work On Your Game Masterclass that comes out every day on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube? I don't think you do because you're asking me some questions that I know I've addressed many times on my show. So go find my show. It's called Work On Your Game. Just look it up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whichever one you have, or SoundCloud. It comes out every day. And we have almost 2,000 episodes. So any question you could possibly ask me, I have addressed there. And what you should do is come to work on your game live. And I'll give you so much game that you'll have everything that you need, guaranteed, in just one day. Yeah, if you think this is good, and I've just been talking for 30 minutes, imagine what I do an entire day when I'm planning it out and I know what I got, the high-level people in the room. Imagine what I deliver them. I just, just you, you tell me. Okay, I'm just leave that as an open statement right there. Woody Tay says, I appreciate you. Woody Tay, are you coming to work on your game live, Woody? It's in Miami. It's in August. I don't know. If you live in Miami, then you already know. It should be an easy decision for you. If you don't live in Miami, then it should be an easy decision because where else, where else would you rather be than in Miami? We got the best weather. We got, uh, you don't have, there's no kind of COVID restrictions, no social distancing, no masking. You don't have to take a COVID test. As a matter of fact, masks are banned. You can't wear a mask at work on your game live. All right. <laughs> you come to work in your game live, you cannot have a mask on. All right. That's my rule. Jordan says, Jordan, the monarch says, going on. I got my ticket. Well, I appreciate you, Jordan. I cut off all negative people and leeches in my life without warning. Some of these people are family members. Should I feel guilty? Um, well, it's not whether it's not about if you should feel anything, Jordan. I mean, if you feel guilty, you feel guilty. There's nothing wrong with with feeling a feeling. I mean, emotions are part of being a human. But if you believe, I'm pretty sure there's a reason why you did it. Right? You probably thought about it before you did it. There's a reason why you did it. And it's to further your own personal success. Then, hey, your, their 
position and what they do is not your responsibility. So you cut them off because it's something about them and who they're being as people that made you say, you know what, I can't really deal with these people anymore. And you did that to help yourself. And that's what you got to do. That's the law of association. You become the average of the people you spend time with. So if you see somebody is not really on the right level and you get rid of them, then that's a good move for you. It's basically addition by subtraction. So it's not about whether you should feel anything. If you do feel that, that's okay. You'll get over it, though. When you see the success that comes with taking negative people or people who are not at your level out of your life, it's going to raise your level up. So sometimes you got to sometimes you got to go backwards to go forward. That's just kind of how life works sometimes. Destination picks and Jordan, I will see you in Miami in about seven weeks. So I'm glad you're coming. Destination picks. What's going on? Are you coming to work on your game live? All I see is a photo there. That destination looks like Miami. I don't know. Maybe that's the Bahamas or something. Jay Sebastian said, how can I attend? Go to the link right here. The pin, you see this pin link? Uh, the pin comment, Jay Sebastian, where it says event ticks. I'm like pointing my finger at it right now. I don't know if y'all see the same thing I see. Work on your game dot live is the link. It's also in my bio. If you just go to my bio on Instagram, click on that link right there. It's the same place. Work on your game dot live is where you get your ticket. It's in Miami. It is one full day. I am teaching 100% of the material. You can see everything I'm going to be talking about. And I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff that's not even on there. So if you listen to my show, you know the topic might be one thing, but I'm going to give you like five things. But I'm going to give you, it's going to be systematic in a way that you will understand it. You'll be able to take notes. You'll have a recording of it. You'll be able to you know, go over it over and over again in the future. And again, you're going to be in a room full of like-minded people. That's going to be the most valuable thing about it. It's not me. It's going to be the other people that you meet. That's going to be the most valuable thing about this event. Trust me. And we're going to have food and drinks. All right, I like good food, too. So y'all will have food. You'll, you'll be, you will be, uh, your thirst will be quenched. You will have water. I don't know what else y'all like to drink. We'll have that stuff. My event manager, Charlene, is going to take care of all of that. So this will be well done. JN said, Miami is where I'm trying to open my basketball training gym. Yeah, a lot of ball players like to hang in Miami in the offseason. I mean, why not? Everybody likes to hang in Miami. Like I said, why not come to Miami? I can understand if I was doing this event in, like, you know, Oklahoma or even New York City right now. Shout out to New York City, but y'all got y'all all kind of locked down and restricted. Nobody wants to do anything. I can see if I was doing an event in some crazy place that you wasn't sure. But Miami, like, right, why would you not come to Miami? Savage said, best women in Miami. All right, well, hey. Whatever, whatever needs, whatever you need to, whatever you need to bring you to Miami for working your game live, all right, you get it. All right, my, and Miami Beach is a beautiful place. Right now, matter of fact, is is Swim Week. Swim Week Miami is happening in Miami Beach right now. So we should have had the event this week if if women is what you were looking for. But listen, it's women in Miami all the time. Trust me, no matter where you go, what time of day. So work on your game live. August twenty fifth in Miami is a full day. You can make a trip out of it. It's beautiful here. I mean, again, what do I got to say about Miami? Y'all know about Miami. Y'all got the Internet. So, I mean, what do I what do I need to say? I don't need to sell the city of Miami. I don't think I need to sell me. I'm, I need to tell y'all that this is I just trying to move you to action. All right? You already understand Miami. You understand Dre Baldwin. You understand work on your game. So let's put all those together and come to work on your game. Live. Go to work on your game dot live. That's where you get your ticket to the event. Again, next Thursday is your last chance to get a ticket. All right, everybody heard me? Next Thursday is your last chance to get a ticket. We're cutting off the ticket sales on Thursday so that we can arrange the logistics for the event. Because when you have people coming in, we got to make sure everything is in order. So we can't sell, we're not selling tickets at the door or anything like that. So next Thursday is the last day to get tickets. And whoever is in is in and whoever is out is out. Next Thursday. Somebody, JN said, what made you decide to move to Miami? The palm trees, the weather. That's, that's enough. That's a good enough reason. Arvin said, just got on my break. That's what's up. Somebody said, vlog there and swim. Now, vlog is too much work. I'd rather do this. This is, I could do this. Vlog and you got to carry the camera around and you got to edit it. And that's, I got too many other things to do. I, I write books. Let's see. Most, we, most vloggers ain't, can't do this. All right. And they ain't got 29 of them like me. So sometimes in life, you got to choose. <laughs> Opportunity cost. Can't do everything. Well, well, so Miami's the best place. Okay, so th therefore, I should see your name on the attendees list very soon. And when well, you got it. Do I prefer Spotify or Apple Music? I usually use Apple Music. I got an Apple Music paid membership. So I use Spotify to listen to some podcasts. And most of the time, I use Apple stuff. Whatever moved to LA, San Diego, San I was looking at LA. 
maybe two years ago, three years ago, the housing out there is ridiculous. And it's not even as nice as Miami's. Miami's housing is nicer and cheaper than LA's. We're looking at the housing in LA, all the houses are like, the buildings are older, but they cost more money. So I'm like, that don't make any sense to me. So I'm staying in Miami, so that's why. San Francisco's rents, even the rent market is ridiculous. It's like, San Francisco got the highest rent in the whole country. And I've been out there to the bay, it's too cold. It gets cold at night out there. I don't like places where it gets cold at night. I like places where it's like 80 degrees at night. And the bay is like 55 at night and it's windy and nah. I'll visit, but I'm not living there. I like where it's warm all day long. Even out in the desert, like I was in Vegas. In Vegas, it's hot during the day, ridiculously hot. It's like being in an oven and it's too dry. And then sometimes at night it gets cold and the air is too dry. Miami is just perfect for me. I like, I like the humidity. I like the heat. I like that it's warm all year round. And I like that working your game live is in Miami on August 25th. So all that said, everybody, y'all got the game that I gave y'all today. Again, the 10 traits of level 10, eight traits of level 10 people. I'm going to post this on my IGTV. I'm also going to post this on YouTube. It'll be a few days before it comes out on YouTube. So I'm going to be doing these lives consistently. I might do them over the weekend. If not the weekend, I'll be back next Monday doing these at least through next week. Next Thursday is the last day to get your ticket. The event is workonyourgame.live. Y'all see it right there, workonyourgame.live. That is the last day. Next Thursday is the last day to get your ticket. You're either in or you are out. August 25th is that event. August 3rd, my book, The Third Day, drops. You can pre-order this now. The book is free. All you're going to do is cover the shipping for the book. We got hardcover. We got paperback. We also have the Work On Your Game system manual. You can add this to your order if you want. If you just check the little box on the page, this is the whole Work On Your Game framework laid out systematic. It's like a textbook of the whole Work On Your Game framework is this book right here. So as you can see, we got a lot going on. I ain't got time to be vlogging or going to the beach, but we are getting the work done. And that's for y'all. Work on your game. Live is the event page. Is the link in my bio. I'll be talking about it on my story every day, forever, until the event happens. And then after it happens, we're gonna do another one. So, but we don't know what next one's gonna be. So you better come to this one. Work on your game. Live. Everybody have a great Friday, great weekend. Work on your game. We out of here.